Hi everyone, I am Dr. Prabhakar, a board certified OBGYN and the fibroid doc. Today I wanted to talk to women who are debating a hysterectomy but are very close to menopause. I saw several patients this week in a similar situation and they're all grappling with the same issues and so I thought I'd make a quick video on it. So there are many reasons why women have heavy bleeding that is really affecting the quality of life. The top three that come to mind are fibroids, endometriosis, and adenomyosis, which is essentially endometriosis gone rogue. Now, there are women who are suffering from these causes but are very close to menopause. So they may be 50 or 51, but they're still getting their periods and they're thinking, man, if I was only in menopause, at least, you know, the hormones would go down and I would not be suffering from these issues anymore. But the thing is, we don't know when they're going to reach menopause. The average age is 52. But there are certainly women who are still bleeding at 54, 55, and 56. So women at the cusp of this um, time frame where they're right around menopause have a very difficult time making the decision about whether to pursue a hysterectomy. So here are some of my thoughts, my top three thoughts on this. So number one, are your symptoms something you can continue to live with? Some women say these symptoms of bleeding and fatigue just are taking over their life. They are, they can't get anything done. They're, they're in bed wearing diapers um, during their period and they can't go on trips and it's really becoming a big issue for their quality of life. Or are you somebody who is like, well, yeah, it's heavy, but it's three days and I can, I can get over it. So think about how badly it's affecting your quality of life. Number two, what is your tolerance for surgery? Are you somebody who is healthy and think you can pretty much bounce back from surgery quickly? You've got the time, um, you know, you can take the time off of work, you have the family support, etc. Or are you somebody who has, you know, your own business and it's, and it's very difficult to even consider taking six weeks off or eight weeks off or um, you don't think you have the support, um, or you have multiple medical problems and you, you know, surgery is not gonna be easy for you. So which one of these patients are you? So that's the second thing to consider. And um, whatever you do, the third thing to do is make sure you have a great team supporting you. Make sure you are seeing a gynecologist who is going to give you all of the medical options as well as the surgical options and the options to do nothing um, and just see how your symptoms go and how you want to you know handle it so these are my these are the top three things that i would consider number one your tolerance for the symptoms and how they affect your quality of life number two your tolerance for the surgery and number three whatever you're considering make sure you have a good medical team and your gynecologist is someone who's going to offer all the options and be patient with you as you try to navigate this difficult decision so if you are somebody who's listening to this and you are undergoing this exact same thing you know comment below let me know your thoughts and you know what has helped you make this decision see you later